Hi, I'm Tony Northrup, and my wife and I are professional photographers, and we frequently shoot portraits, commercial photography, product photography in the studio. And I want to show you the most important tool we have in our arsenal, which is tethering a camera to a computer. First, I'm going to tell you why this is so powerful. First, I can see way more detail on this big 4K monitor than I can on the tiny screen on the back of my camera. This also makes it much easier for me to share. I can control the camera settings and shoot directly from the computer. That big screen and the way I've connected it to this kiosk allows me to flip the screen around and easily show the images to the model, which can really help me describe what exactly I need from them. It also means if we have an art director or a boss in the room, then it's a more collaborative experience. They can examine it while I'm on the camera. And it's just so much easier than trying to be like, oh, let me flip the screen around. Can you squint and see? What happens when you flip the screen around on a camera is the model inevitably moves forward and then you have to reset everything, get them back in the light. In other words, having a big screen that I can flip around provides more opportunity for collaboration with both the model and any other stakeholders working on the project. It also frees me as the photographer to move into the scene and be an extra pair of hands so I can be making small adjustments while still taking pictures with a remote control in my hand, especially when the camera is fixed like that, which it usually is in the studio environment. Honestly, there have been times when I've been taking the pictures, but I've also been like literally hiding behind the model because I'm like, trying to fix the outfit and make it fit properly or literally holding a light stand because we needed it in an unusual place. Having that versatility to step away from the camera is really, really important. Having a computer that can process the images in real time also allows you to better reflect what the final images are gonna look like. If you're like me and you shoot to process, then you know that the pictures in camera don't necessarily reflect what the final product is gonna look like. Like maybe you're doing a black and white shoot. Well, the, you're gonna be capturing it in full color and thus it won't look anything like it. But if I'm shooting into Lightroom or Capture One here, then I could apply any sort of preset as it's being imported. Often I'm just raising the shadows, but that really changes how it looks. And if you're an art director or a model who doesn't necessarily understand the complete start to finish workflow of the photo, that really helps them envision the final product better. Pretty much any computer will do. I chose a Windows computer because they're cheaper than Mac computers and a 20 inch 16 by nine 4K display. I really like having a big uh, high resolution screen. I also love that this is on a special stand that allows me to rotate the screen vertically here because I'm, I'm usually shooting portrait orientation and I can change the display settings in Windows to also be portrait. And that means I have just a way, way, way bigger screen than I would if it were simply horizontal. This stand is on wheels, which is really nice. So I can move it around in the studio to different places. And it has a little place for a desktop computer down here. I just have a Dell Alienware computer. It doesn't really need to be anything special, but I would strongly suggest you get 16 uh, gigabytes of RAM, uh, a good at least 512 gig SSD drive, maybe bigger if you're shooting a lot or you want to store the images permanently on the computer, uh, high speed wireless, or I'm using a wired network here to a wireless access point just to improve my network performance because I transfer these images over the network in real time. A USB-C port native is really important because you want to get as much performance in that connection between the computer and the camera. But if you just have a laptop or something that you want to drag in the studio and possibly hook up an external monitor to, it all helps. Just start out with your current laptop and I, you're probably going to want to upgrade it at some point. How do you actually connect the camera to the computer? It's extremely easy, just with a USB cable. All modern cameras have a USB connection and most of them support tethering. You can see here I have a bright orange tether tools USB-C cable. It just connects right into the side any USB cable would work. The tether tools helps because it's a little more visible and people are less likely to trip over it. That is a major concern. I know this from experience. Anytime you have cables, people are going to trip over them. So if it is a little bit safer, then I'm happy to pay a little bit extra for their cable. A nice long cable, like 10, 15 feet, 
can really be helpful too and just provide more flexibility as far as the placement of your camera and the computer and allowing you to route the cable in such a way that people won't trip over it. I've never found good performance with Wi-Fi. First, all except the very latest cameras have only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And it, it's very slow, especially if you're using a high resolution camera, it's gonna take a little too long. With USB-C tethering, it can appear in less than a second. You get that real-time response that allows you to keep your workflow going and it speeds you up instead of slowing you down. You can, however, use the smartphone app and connect via Wi-Fi to your cameras and get a live view usually and shoot usually. I've just never found a Wi-Fi app that I consider to be good enough for that professional use. Professional grade cameras like a Canon 1DX, a Nikon D5, a Sony Alpha 1, a Sony Alpha 9 will have a physical ethernet cable, like a gigabit ethernet cable. That can be much faster than wireless transfer and it has lower latency, but it requires you to configure your computer as an FTP server. I'm an old IT guy, so that works okay for me. If you're not an IT guy, it's gonna be pretty hard. I would recommend checking out the FileZilla server, which can be free FTP software that you can run on your computer, but you'll have to configure your firewall and maybe the firewall on your router if you wanna transfer things over the internet. I'll, I'll make a separate tutorial for it, how about that? Now let's talk about the software we use. I use Smart Shooter 4 which is this very dedicated app that just does this one thing of computer tethering, but it, it does it really well. That's the thing. You can tether with Lightroom Classic, not Lightroom, but Lightroom Classic. You can tether with Capture One, two of the most popular editing tools, and they both work with most cameras, but Smart Shooter 4 just generally works more reliably and it has more features. For example, it will allow me to change the shutter uh, mode from single shot to multiple shot to setting a timer. And that's something I couldn't do when I used to shoot with Capture One tethered. Smart Shooter 4 is 70 bucks and I think that's a pretty good value, but it does have some downsides. If you normally edit in Lightroom Classic or Capture One, of course, you're not going to be able to apply your presets in here. It's basically just doing the capture and then you'll have to take those files and import them into your regular editing app. So you're adding in an extra and possibly unnecessary step. You also have to pay for Smart Shooter 4 and your camera might have free software that would support that tethering even if you don't have Lightroom Classic or Capture One. For example, Nikon and Canon and Fuji each have their own dedicated software for doing this or perhaps they work with Capture One to have a, a free version of Capture One just for your device. So give it a Google with your specific camera model and you might find free software, but try the trial of Smart Shooter 4 because it's the one that I like best. Links for all this gear is in the description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more tutorials. If you have tips on how you tether or follow up questions for me, add a comment down below. And of course, don't forget to check out our book, Stunning Digital Photography, which has detailed information about shooting portraits, commercial photography, product photography, and all the things you need to know about techniques, as well as our art and science of photography video training series, which goes deeper than we can possibly go into YouTube. Buying these products helps support our channel. It comes directly from us, like I will physically mail you this stuff, and there's no middleman. So you're helping to support a small business. Also, we have our professional portrait training series. If you actually wanna make money, in portrait photography, it, it shows you how you can make a good living selling people pictures and prints that they love. Thanks and bye.